I'm going to walk through the example application that we build in this module of Elite Ionic. Uh, it's an application called Hangs. And the purpose of this module is to mostly demonstrate how to use uh, CouchDB and PouchDB in a, a real world application uh, with real backend. Uh, but it also serves as a kind of, um, I guess, an amalgamation of all the other modules, or at least most of the other modules that are in Elite Ionic. So in other modules, we cover things like performance, uh, testing, UI, UX, and those sorts of things. So in this application, we take a lot of those concepts we've covered and apply them into a single application. Uh, so the main focus is on CouchDB and PouchDB and using that as a uh, backend, um, but we also include those other lessons in there uh, as well. So I've got the, the final built application uh, installed on my phone now. I've got it uh, on the screen and I just want to just run through it, show you what it looks like when it's completed. Uh, so you can see what we'll be building and the kinds of things you might learn along the way. Okay, so I'm just gonna open that up now. And you can see we have the, the login screen there. We had a little animation playing on the logo. So we'll first take a look at the, uh, the create account screen. So I'll open that up now. And you can see we have uh, this form here and this is just a, a simple sign-up form. Uh, this integrates with uh, the PouchDB, CouchDB backend, and it uses a site called SuperLogin to handle the account creation, uh, user authentication, stuff like that. And there's a few interesting things going on here. We have some uh, advanced sort of validations happening in these fields. So the first two, the username and the uh, email fields, they actually have a, an asynchronous validation set up. So uh, this actually hits the server to check if the username is available. Uh, so first of all, it does has simple uh, validations. Like if I try to put a, a exclamation mark in here, it says, well, uh, you can't do that. This can only contain numbers and letters. Uh, but if I do uh, something that would be a valid username, but it's not available because somebody else is already using it, then it's going to let us know as well. So if I try to type in, uh, say, uh, Josh Maroney now, so this is a username that I've already uh, used. Uh, so it checks the server, does a little um, uh, spinning animation there as it's uh, checking against the server. Uh, when that comes back, it says, sorry, you can't use this username. Uh, but if I just chuck, say, uh, another letter on the end there, that should be available. It'll check it and it's fine and I can move on to the next field. Uh, so the same thing there happens with uh, the email and, um, and, and the password and confirmed passwords also have a special validator to make sure that they match. Uh, so you won't actually be able to, you won't be able to submit that form until all those values are valid. Okay, so then we have the login screen itself where we can log into an account we've already created. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a CouchDB, uh, it has a CouchDB backend, it's using SuperLogin for account creation, authentication, and it's also hosted on Amazon Web Services. So this is a, this is like a real application now, it's um, communicating with a real production server, and I'm accessing this remotely on my phone, it's not just something that's running uh, locally on, say, a, a locally installed version of CouchDB, uh, which we do uh, initially in this module, just as we're developing the application, but then we move to uh, a real server. So I'm just going to log in now. And you probably noticed my password is password for this right now. Uh, so I'm going to hit log in, and then that's going to take us into uh, the main uh, part of the application. So it was probably too fast for you to see it there. I wasn't actually paying attention to uh, the screen just then. Uh, I mentioned before, the, there's focus in this application on things we've learned in the other modules, like uh, user interface, user experience types thing, uh, type of things. And when this um, page loads, uh, before, these, um, before the posts have actually loaded in from the server and they're displaying on the screen, little sort of placeholder skeleton cards are shown. And this is what Facebook does to help sort of reduce that uh, the impact of the load time. So it's very small load time anyway, but there is you know, a brief period of loading. And if something is on the screen initially, uh, it helps sort of reduce that uh, feeling that it's taking uh, a long time to load. So hopefully you saw that pop up on the screen briefly there. But yeah, if, if you're familiar with Facebook, you know what I'm talking about. When you, uh, when you first open Facebook, you'll see a sort of empty post uh, with just gray boxes and lines in there. And so the basic idea of this application is it's just a kind of shared database where uh, perhaps like a friend group or perhaps a geographical type of location, uh, you can post notices and you can chat to people that are using the application. So you can just post stuff here. If I you know, click on the add button, I can add a new notice and I can see all the notices that have already been posted on this screen here. 
And so there's a guy called Tess Guy who's posted about a party at John's house. Uh, but if I go to one of the, uh, the posts that I've added, uh, you can see there's edit and delete buttons on my post. Um, so we also cover you know, making sure that uh, a user can only edit uh, notices that they've added. And so we do that partly by um, you know, changing the user interface to only provide those options to people who um, created the notice. Uh, but we also make sure that, that those rules are enforced on the back end in CouchDB using validate doc update functions. And that's all stuff we will get into uh, eventually in this module. Uh, then we have the uh, chat section here. Uh, so just very simple kind of um, chat UI here. Um, as you can see, I've got a bunch of sort of test messages up there. And we're using the live replication of you know, PouchDB and CouchDB. So anytime that anything, whether it's a notice or a chat, is added uh, to the database, that's going to be replicated and appear uh, here live. And so on this screen here, I can just type, uh, uh, we'll type literally whatever. Uh, I can post that. That pops up there for me. Um, but if uh, test guy had his application open right now, that's also going to sync to his database, and that's his local PouchDB database, and that's going to appear on screen for him. Another thing we implement is a kind of, uh, I guess, remember me functionality. So once you log in uh, the first time, uh, as long as you have an active uh, token, uh, it's going to automatically log you back in when you come back. So let's say if I were to close this application now, and we'll close it completely. Uh, if I open it again, you can see it went to the uh, login screen there initially. It checks to see if we have a valid token available. Uh, we do, so it just chucks us right into the application. Uh, but another really cool thing is that since we are using uh, PouchDB and CouchDB, all the data that's stored in the remote CouchDB database, or rather not all of it, just the stuff we want, can be replicated to our local PouchDB database. So the data is stored on the device itself. And this allows us to access that same data offline. Uh, so when we don't have a connection, we can work with our local database. And when the application does come back online, it's going to sync any changes we've made uh, back to the CouchDB server. And then any changes that were made to the database that say other people had made, when we come back online, that's going to sync to us as well. So just to demonstrate that, if I, again, if I close this completely, and I'm also going to switch on uh, airplane mode. Okay, it turns out I can't actually switch uh, to airplane mode here. I can't, I can't turn my Wi-Fi off because uh, I need that to display uh, the phone on the screen right now. Uh, it disconnects from my computer when I do that. So uh, you just have to take my word for that one. Uh, but if you are offline, when you attempt to open this, it'll still take you into the application itself. Uh, and you can start, you, know, you can add new notices if you want. You can edit your notices, you can add to the chat. Uh, and when you uh, eventually come back online, any of those changes that you made will sync uh, to the database. Okay, so that's uh, more or less what we'll be focusing on in this module. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what it will all uh, look like in the end, what the end goal is. Uh, this application is a, it's a really good um, format for applying all of those lessons we've looked at in other modules uh, into one uh, application. So I think there's a lot to learn here and I hope you enjoy the module.